This video is a refresher for pharmacists who have already been trained to immunize. Injectable vaccines are administered via the intramuscular IM or subcutaneous SC routes. Pharmacists should be familiar and comfortable with these two routes of administration. Vaccines are also available for intradermal injection, oral administration, and via intranasal spray. This video will review the IM and SC routes only. For the most recent list of vaccines, dosages, and recommended administration, refer to the current Canadian Immunization Guide by the National Advisory Committee on Immunization. Also refer to the package insert before your client arrives. Your workstation should be set up for optimum safety, aseptic technique, and comfort. It's important to have all the necessary equipment or materials on hand, including appropriately sized syringes and needles, alcohol swabs, cotton balls, a sharps container, and gloves. Arrange all items in a systematic order on a table. The sharps container should be on the table close to your immunizing hand so you don't cross over the other hand and risk needle stick injury. In addition to these items, it's important to also have an emergency protocol as well as medication, supplies, and equipment on hand to provide immediate care and management of an anaphylactic reaction. Anaphylaxis is treatable in all cases, but also preventable. Before administering any vaccine, a pre-vaccination screening for patient risk factors should be done. Personnel administering vaccines should take appropriate precautions to minimize the spread of disease to or from patients. Hand hygiene should be performed before vaccine preparation, between vaccine recipients, and more often whenever the hands are soiled. Gloves are not required when administering vaccines unless the healthcare worker has open hand lesions or anticipates contact with potentially infectious body fluids. Before drawing up the vaccine, the pharmacist should verify the integrity of the vaccine. Assure that the vaccine storage conditions are appropriate by checking the temperature monitor chart. Inspect the vaccine product to ensure that there are no irregularities such as damage or contamination. Check that the color and appearance of the vaccine are correct. Check the vaccine identification label and expiry date on the vaccine package. If the expiry date indicates only the month and the year, the vaccine can be used until the end of the indicated month. Expired vaccines should be removed from the refrigerator unit and labeled as expired. After verifying the vaccine, the pharmacist should determine which route the vaccine requires, intramuscular or subcutaneous. Next, the pharmacist should prepare the patient, choose the appropriate needle size, and select the site of injection. Patient positioning is quite important. The pharmacist must ensure that the patient is comfortable. Factors that determine the best position are site of administration and level of anxiety of the patient. In general, the following patient positioning instructions apply to both IM and SC injections. Ask the patient to sit upright or lie down, whichever is most relaxing for the patient. Ensure the upper arm is easily accessible. Fully expose the upper arm and avoid tight clothing above the injection site. The muscles should be relaxed, so encourage the patient to either let the arm hang by the side or rest the arm on their lap or hip. Rapid injection reduces pain. For managing pain and fear in children, breathing and distraction techniques such as reading books or listening to music are effective. When necessary, two vaccines can be given in the same limb at a single visit. The distance between the two injections should be at least one inch. If multiple vaccines are being administered, give the most painful vaccine last. For example, influenza vaccine, then conjugate pneumococcal vaccine. Needle selection should be based on the route of administration, the size of muscle mass, and viscosity of the vaccine. For an IM injection, use a 22 to 25 gauge needle. It's important for the needle to be long enough to reach the muscle, and this of course depends on the size of the patient being vaccinated. 
For children 5 to 10 years of age, the needle length should be 1 inch. For adolescents and adults, the needle length should be 1 to 1 and a half inches. The recommended sites for IM injection is the deltoid muscle of the upper arm. Vaccines containing adjuvants are to be administered via IM injection. If inadvertently injected subcutaneously or intradermally, increased inflammation, induration, or granuloma formation may occur. Identifying the injection site using landmarking. Imagine a triangle with its base at the lower edge of the acromion and its peak above the insertion point of the deltoid muscle. The injection point is in the center of the triangle, two to three finger breadths below the acromion process. If the injection is performed too high on the shoulder, the vaccine can penetrate the bursa sac, causing injury. Following injection site selection, prepare the area with an alcohol wipe using a circular motion, starting from the center outward. Allow the area to dry. With your free hand, hold the skin firmly but not bunched between your thumb and forefinger, isolating the muscle. Insert the needle fully at a 90 degree angle and rapidly inject the vaccine into the muscle. Withdraw the needle. If using a retractable safety engineered needle, you'll need to apply slight pressure to the plunger to ensure the needle retracts. Apply light pressure to the injection site for several seconds with a dry cotton ball or gauze, especially if bleeding occurs. Do not rub the area as studies suggest that rubbing can decrease vaccine absorption. Aspiration, or pulling back on the plunger before injection, is not recommended. There are no studies that have assessed the need for aspiration prior to IM injection of vaccines in relation to vaccine safety. Subcutaneous vaccines are injected into the fat tissue below the dermis but above the outer triceps of the arm muscle. For a subcutaneous injection, Use a 22 to 25 gauge needle with a length of 5 eighths inch. With the patient properly positioned, subcutaneous injections are administered as follows. Landmark the site between the acromion and elbow. After appropriate site selection, prepare the area with an alcohol wipe using a circular motion starting from the center outward. Allow the area to dry. Bunch or pinch up the skin and fat between the thumb and forefinger in order to lift the fat tissue away from the underlying muscle. Insert the needle at a 45 degree angle and then rapidly inject the vaccine into the tissue. Withdraw the needle and apply light pressure to the injection site for several seconds using a dry cotton ball or gauze. Do not rub or massage the site post-injection. Any and all vaccine administration should be fully documented in the patient's immunization record. If the patient does not have an immunization record, one should be provided with instructions to keep the record in a safe place. Fortunately, anaphylaxis is very rare. Most instances of anaphylaxis begin within 30 minutes after vaccination. Patients should be kept under observation for 15 to 30 minutes following vaccination to observe for any adverse events. Patients can wait in a seating area or circulate through the pharmacy during this waiting period. The pharmacist should use their professional judgment to determine if a longer wait period is necessary. Pharmacists are encouraged to make the vaccine administration session as empathetic and supportive an experience as possible. A positive experience will help ensure follow-up and compliance for future vaccinations and of course, will enhance the relationship between the healthcare provider and the patient.